Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm sitting out in my garden. I'm actually collecting vegetables right now from the garden. Picked a small squash. I just want to do an update. I may be a little slow this week uh, putting up videos. My dog that's almost 17 years old, Penny, is not doing well. and It, it is hard on me, so what I've been doing is, well, catering to her. She's at the vet's right now. They can't get her to eat. She had to have surgery because we found an abscess. And it's kind of an odd situation. I know so many of you have gone through it. I mean, she's gonna be 17 in the very beginning of February. And I am struggling to do what I can. And then if I can't do any more, I guess at that point, well, you know. So today they're sending her home to see if I can get her to eat. And I'm going to make, I have these, um, patties I make for the dogs that they absolutely love because I know that a lot of the dry dog food doesn't have what they really need and we're going to see if I can get her to eat that and then she goes back to the vet tomorrow she's been on an IV and then uh, I guess at some point a decision will be made she had a long wonderful life I absolutely understand that but if I can do anything you know first or whatever we'll see She's been slowing down a lot. I had her out in the garden the other day. I took her out in the bird garden and she roamed around and she really seemed to like it. Now, keep in mind, I, for you that don't know, she is completely blind and deaf. She lost her hearing probably about two years ago. We, we kind of noticed something, but because her sight was really good, we didn't really notice that much. And then when she started getting, it's not even cataracts, her eyes started to go. I brought her to the vets. There, there was nothing they could do. She was already about 15. So they said it's, it is age. Uh, they tried to clean her ears and everything, but had nothing to do with anything. And so she lost her sight. So she's been living for almost two years, completely blind and deaf, but she understands. She comes in the kitchen at night. She can sense that, hey, the dogs are getting a little ice cream or something. And she knows what's going on. She sleeps with me. She knows where I am. She can find me. She has a really good nose on her. But, you know, this, well, last week we noticed and it was not doing, you know, she wasn't doing what she usually does. So we'll see, but I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. I am trying to take care of the garden the best I can, which I am. It doesn't take a lot, but coming out here and watering. I made these patties, and if you're interested, I can tell you another time. It's very basic. It's my grandmother used to make spinach patties, she called it. And it was eggs and spinach chopped up with a little bit of flour and then fried. Well, I started doing that for the dogs instead of cooking it the way a lot of people do it in the Instapot. I make it that way and use olive oil or coconut oil and then I grate up zucchini and I put in there sometimes a little turmeric. Whatever I feel like putting in there, I chop up chicken and make it, I mean, we eat it, it's that good. What's omitted in there is anything that dogs cannot eat. You know, maybe I won't put salt in there. There's enough salt in the food for them, so they don't need salt, but I can put turmeric in there. I can even put a little black pepper to make sure they get the benefits of the turmeric. And of course, with the olive oil or coconut oil or ghee, if I use a little ghee, then that helps absorb the turmeric. And like I said, it's, it's so easy. I'm gonna be doing that a lot right now for the dogs because I think it's so important that they get real food that you lightly, lightly cook it on a frying pan. You make big pancakes and then you can layer them and freeze them and take them out and add it to their dog food. And you know they're getting really good food because, well, they're getting stuff out of the garden. So we're gonna see if I can get her to eat that today and if not, back to the vet again tomorrow. It's been that way now for a while. So it's been, you know, my mind isn't on the garden as much as my mind's not on a lot of stuff right now, except for trying to take care of her. She is the last of, uh, well, of her mother. Her mother was Dinky, which was an amazing dog. That dog was unreal. Um, the dog, uh, uh, that's a story in itself. My daughter got me her, the vet had the mother, and nobody wanted this puppy because she was so different. And then, my, like I said, my daughter got her for me. And I, it took me a year to decide if I was going to keep her. She was the most unusual dog. It was like having a little person in the house. A mind of her own, understood everything. And then she had puppies at one point, And that's when we kept, almost 17 years ago, we kept Penny. Now, Penny is different from her mother. Though she's really smart. You've probably seen her in some videos where she tapped on the head and told me who did what. 
Penny, it's hard to explain, never belonged to me. She never belonged to Gary. Penny was very close to her mother. And when her mother died quite a few years ago, she still remained very independent. She's not a lap dog. She may sit a little bit on your lap, but she's very independent. She wants to be maybe on her bed or sunning herself outside or doing whatever she wants to do. And if she doesn't want to do it, she'll push her head on you real hard to make sure you put her down. Just a very independent dog. Her mother was independent too, but her mother was, again, it was like a, the dog even did jokes. She would, she would laugh. It was the weird, it was, like I said, it was the strangest dog I ever had. If she didn't get what she wants, she'd bite you in the ankle and make sure you got her what she wanted. This was her mother. So it's like that whole generation will be gone now for me. And I think that's what makes it really hard. She, her mother was half Yorkie and half Chihuahua. And then Penny is three quarter Yorkie because she was her mother and then her dad was a Yorkie. So that's about it. I'm going to go back and collect some stuff. I'm going to make some patties. I might make some brown rice and then I make it into like, like a big pancake and the dogs love it. And then, like I said, you can layer it and freeze it and do all kinds of stuff and take it out as needed. And I think it's kind of better than some of the dog foods because I know what's going in it exactly and there's no preservatives or anything. So fresh eggs and, well, you know, anything they need. So everybody stay well. I'll be around really soon. You know, I am doing everything I have to do. I'm trying to keep up with the car and we're going through a major heat wave again and it's been really, really hot. So it's been, you know, one of those things that we have to deal with. I'm gonna go hit that truck bed with some water, even I mean, on the bottom. I'm not gonna get let those leaves get wet, but that's what it does. It droops and then all the leaves will pop up. So have a wonderful day, and we'll be doing a garden tour soon, and that's it. And of course, don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.